All right, welcome back to Sakura Angels. All right, let's see. Hold on a sec. All right, there we go. So let's continue where we left off. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, the last part was well, we took lunch on a rooftop instead of um, you know hanging out in a lunch room with Saika because it's going to be all noisy and then it's all public. But yeah, we met. I met Hikari at the rooftops, so that's amazing. So anyway, let's uh, enough talking. Let's read this. The lunch break soon comes to an end when we're whisked when we're whisked back to class. The rest of the school day goes by fairly normally. No crazy attacks. No monsters. I still can't shake the feeling something is watching me though. Another day down, another walk home. My two guardians by my side. They seem noticeably more tense compared to last night. They seem noticeably more tense compared to... Well, I already said that. After how close that fight was, I really don't blame them. We were lucky she didn't pursue us back then or that could have been it for me. No, it would have spelled the, the end for everyone. The journey back is silent. Both the girls' faces mirroring each other in a look of sheer determination. They seem ready to spring to action at the slightest of, slightest sign of danger, so I don't want to break their concentration with mindless small talk. Gradually, the sun sets on our route ahead, streetlights flickering to life overhead one by one. Great. The more the shadows begin to creep in all around us, the more tense I can feel myself become. I come to a stop. Something doesn't feel right. Really, is is it going to be the same uh, evil girl from last time, the dark angel? Kenta, what there it is again. Did that damn headache out of nowhere? Wait, hasn't there always been a pattern with these headaches? They don't usually happen. They don't usually happen during the day unless... I knew it! You really do make this easy, you know. Oh boy. Of course. We walked right into it. I really need to start to find a new route home. Of course. A sultry laugh drips from out in the darkness, causing both the girls to assume offensive positions. It could only be one person. Obsidian wings unfurl from amidst the dark, amidst the night sky, and the amber-eyed adversary from before makes her presence known in a storm of black feathers. What was her name? Yuzuki? Yes. I guess it doesn't matter. Of course it doesn't matter, goddammit. Names mean nothing right now. Yeah, sure. I, I see how it is. She has a maniacal look in her eye. A killer glint. Much like before, she isn't here to play around. There's only one thing she's after. Me. Light floods in and dispels the darkness for only a moment as the pair... Don their battle gear, weapons at hand. Okay. Right, right. I know how this works, okay? Not needing to be told twice, I sprint a good distance from the three girls as to not get caught up in any crossfire. But, are they going to be able to win? Yuzuki hardly broke a sweat last night, and was able to keep both of them at bay at once with that scythe of hers. The difference in power was just too much. Not to mention my guardians have some serious issues with working together as a team. Last night was a complete disaster. I fear we might have to take another tactical retreat, and I'm not sure if I have the stomach for it. Yuzuki lands gracefully before Sayaka and Hikari, an unsettling grin spreading from ear to ear on her face. <laughs> Her dark wings erupt into a stream of feathers, 
which reform into a deadly scythe within her hands. Oh boy. Hikari nods and lunges for Yuzuki before she can make the first move. Sayaka kicks off of the ground and flies a good deal backwards as she readies an arrow in her bow. Am I witnessing team play here? It certainly makes a change after last night's disaster. It's all useless. Yuzuki reacts like lightning and brings her scythe to a whirl clashing with Hikari's sword. A shockwave bursts through the street as the two weapons collide, shattering nearby glass and warping street signs, a testament to just how strong these girls are. I'm beginning to see shades of last night's fight. Yuzuki has the advantage in terms of brute strength, so she'll no doubt push back against Hikari's blade. But Hikari doesn't seem nervous at all. In fact, she seems confident. Light come forth. Hikari stands her ground in a clash with gritted teeth, and her sword gives off a vibrant glow at her command. A glow that continues to intensify until it engulfs the clashing pair in a blinding light. I'm forced to shield my eyes with my arm, as if I were staring at the sun itself. If it was bad enough for me at this distance, I can't imagine how bad it must have been for both of them. From the safety of my sleeve, I peer back out. I peer back out of the battle, the light fading slightly. Wow! Look at the shock on Yuzuki's face. Look at that. It seems Yuzuki wasn't expecting that at all, as she's reeling back from it, from it all, a hand to her face. <laughs> you think you're playing it? Oh boy. Saika lets loose the arrow she'd been charging since the pair had clashed. It rockets off with unreal speed, leaving a trail of glimmering sparks in its wake as it homes in on Yuzuki. Hikari pulls back at Saika's voice and ducks to just barely avoid the arrow coming her way. It's a direct hit. The arrow bursts upon impact and sends Yuzuki skidding backwards as she desperately tries to keep upright. It doesn't end there though. Hikari hops to her feet and charges in for a follow-up attack whilst Yuzuki is trying her best to recover from the arrow. Steel sings as Hikari kicks off of the ground and goes for a crushing blow to the head. This should be it. I can't see how she'll escape from Hikari's blade now. I don't know which thumbnail's better, either Saika or Hikari's. Hikari's has a panty shot, look at that. The ground under my feet gives off a shake, I mean gives off a quake as she lands. A good half of the road splits under her blade and chunks of concrete rain everywhere. It was a devastating attack to be sure. Surely no one could have survived a blow like that, but... What? Hikari is just as bewildered as I am. The dark girl is nowhere to be seen. A single black feather drifts down from where she once stood. She just vanished. A sinister giggle echoes from the shadows. Did Yuzuki teleport? Or is, or is she just so fast I couldn't keep up? Hikari bolts up at the sound and shoots Sayaka a frenzied look. Something glimmers from out of the darkness behind her and then lashes out with a vicious swing. Sayaka just barely reacts in time, jumping to avoid the fatal slash. At least, I thought she had avoided it.
Hmm, I was not expecting that, holy crap. There's a sudden burst and Saika lets out a shriek. She herself looks unharmed, but a good portion of her outfit is in tatters. Fragments of what used to be her outfit rain down from above, well, and truly diced by the mad girl's scythe. I mean, it's horrible. There's hardly anything left of her outfit. From where I'm standing, I can practically see... Huh? I lost track of what I was thinking about there. Sorry. Ahem. Fight bad. Damage terrible. Okay, I'm back on track. This is insane. If she had reacted just a fraction of her second slower, her outfit wouldn't have been the only thing cut to ribbons by that attack. I thought Yuzuki seemed bad before, but if anything, tonight she seems even stronger. Or is it just all in my head? The pair learned from their mistakes the previous night and devised something almost resembling teamwork tonight to try and put an end to her, but she hits back twice as hard anyway. Sayaka and Hikari have given it their all and this monster still has the upper hand. I wonder if they have any tricks left. I suppose I should put more faith in my guardian angels, even if things look dire right now. They are surely trained for these kinds of intense battles, and they must have at least something to fall back on. Something that I hope doesn't involve flying again. I really, really don't want to fly again. At this point, I'll take my chances with Yuzuki. Saika hugs herself in an effort to... <laughs> Saika... Hugs herself in an effort to cover up, her face flushed with embarrassment. I can't imagine this being convenient at all during a fight. Especially not one as serious as this. I feel like I shouldn't be watching this. But this is an important fight I can't afford to take my eyes off of. Yes, indeed. Or something like that. I can't fight like this. It's like getting stage fright. With, with what should be a fairly troubling scene for her partner, Hikari actually seems more annoyed than anything as she rushes over. She stomps her foot and scolds her half-naked partner. That seems like a rather bizarre way to treat someone in such a state. Eh? She can? So why has she been acting like she has? Oh, now you... Oh, wow. Oh, right. There's another flash, and her outfit is restored to what it once was. Huh. It really was that easy. <laughs> ah, Saika, you're such a one good playful child. I totally forgot. Hikari hoists her sword up onto her shoulder and lets out a sigh. A dangerous vein just faintly visible on her forehead. Show off. Bonk. Hikari wraps her on the head. What is even... Oh yeah, isn't that the one incident where... Kenta accidentally barged into the bathroom while she's half naked? What is even... <laughs> Oh. 
This is embarrassing. Guys, aren't you forgetting something here? I mean, it's not like you were in the middle of a fight or anything. Wait, what? Wait, that's a point. Yuzuki could have torn these two up while they were arguing. Where did she go after that attack? As of suddenly realizing this fat as well, both the girls jump into serious mode, if that's even really possible, and assume offensive stances once more. Did you catch where she went to? Why did I even ask? I'm beginning to grow uneasy. I instinctively throw a glance over my shoulder only to be met with a maniacal smile. Bah. Boo. Just Lily came out of nowhere when when he turns around behind. You! She's right behind me, of course. How did she manage that? Because she's a freaking ninja. Then again, I guess it probably wasn't that difficult a feat with how distracted my supposed guardians can get. I stumble backwards with a gasp, just narrowly avoiding her outstretched grasp as she reaches for me with a limp. <laughs> Damn it, I was so close as well. The dark girl winces and her shoulders sink. It seems like she barely made any strength left as she just barely keeps a hold of her side, limply at her side. Maybe the combined attack before was more effective than I thought and it finally all caught up to her, her energy reserves well and truly spent. This was probably her last ditch attempt to get me. I'm lucky I turned around when I did. Yeah, you would have got kidnapped there. She gives me a narrowed glare as she staggers back a few steps, my bodyguards catching up to me. Amber eyes full of hatred, she shifts her gaze to Sayaka and Hikari. Don't think you've won anything just yet, I'll be back. He will be mine. That's what she says. Till we meet again. Of course. She begins to sink back into the shadows, giving off another devious laugh despite her limping retreat. That last part of what she said worries me. Something to play with. Hikari disregards her partner's advice and blazes forward, sword at the ready. It seems like her blade is just about to connect with Yuzuki before she can make her escape. But something suddenly whips out as if appearing out of nowhere and takes Hikari off of her feet, hoisting her high into the air. A thick, slimy, a thick, slimy appendage. Uh, a tentacle. Hikari drops her sword after being blindsided by the beast and is left wrestling helplessly against the writhing tendrils as they work to ensnare her. Wow. This is another thumbnail moment. How many mo how many good moments am I going to put once I put this I mean once I upload this. Holy shit. Left wrestling hap helplessly against the rhythm tendrils as they worked in snare. <laughs> 
I see her hands give off a glow. That's right. If she doesn't have a weapon, she still has her magic. She should be able to make quick work of this thing, sword or not. <laughs> or maybe not. The beast is one step ahead of her and works to bind her hands, leaving her well and truly, and truly helpless. The tentacles creep in even closer, oozing a pungent substance that coats a good majority of her. It does look indeed disgusting. I don't think all the showers in the world are going to be able to get this stuff out of my hair. She bemoans her disgusting predicament as she thrashes around, ultimately only resulting in the tentacles constricting tighter against her. Okay, so she can't save herself, but her trusty partner should be able to pierce the tentacles with a well-placed arrow, right? Right? <laughs> What? When did they show up? Sayaka is surrounded by a pack of those demonic dogs from before. The ones that nearly took my life. They must have charged in at the same they must have charged in at the same time as the tentacle creature made itself known. Were they summoned by Yuzuki, I wonder? Wait. Can she control them? <laughs> Hikari keeps up a brave front, but I can see the tentacles are taking their toll on her. This is bad. Both of them are held up by monsters. While Saika is handy with a bow, I don't think she I don't think she's all that good at close-up combat, so she might be in trouble here. And then, Hikari is clearly in need of assistance. The tentacles might completely crush her if nothing is done soon. So with both of them struggling, who's left to help them? Me? But I haven't ever fought anything in my life. I would have been dead a long ago if these two hadn't made themselves known in my life. I clench my fist tight and throw a glance between the two girls. They've risked so much to help me before, while I've just stood on, on the sidelines like some sort of coward. They need my help. What can I do? I don't have any magic powers. I don't have super strength. I can't fly, obviously. I'm useless. Yeah, you're just a normal human being. Can I just use the term normie? Just who you are? Useless. I stomp at the ground, cursing my weak nature. Huh? Something clatters at my foot. Hikari's sword. A sizable amount of steel that almost rivals Hikari herself in height. I crouch down to pick it up. Despite its size, it's surprisingly light. I'm able to take it up with just a single hand. This is crazy. I can't believe I'm even thinking about doing this. I strain up and tighten my hold on the... I strain up and tighten my hold on the sword, giving it a test swipe into the air. It slices through without much resistance and gives off a satisfying swish. It'll be just as easy, right? Air is one thing, but to even think about using this thing on something living, even if they're monsters, I'm just not sure if I can follow through with this. I can hear cries of distress from both sides. Time is running out. I've made up my mind. I can't save them both at once though. Who needs help more urgently? Oh boy. 
Of course, you can't help both of them. Okay. I wanna... I must save Sayaka. Right. Sayaka has numerous, far more threatening foes than just a couple of slimy tentacles. These things might tear her apart if I wait too long. Sayaka, hang on! I kick off and head to Sayaka's side first. The sword held awkwardly at my side. I really don't know how to even hold this properly. I must look so stupid right now. She frantically bobs and weaves her way out of the incoming claws and fangs, unable to find a spare moment to get an arrow out. I pick up the pace nearing the beasts. There isn't a moment to lose. This is my time to shine. I can be the hero. Oof, of course. In my haste to reach Saika in time, I put a foot in the wrong place and trip myself up in in a spectacular display of heroism. I pull into a tumble and barrel straight into one of the creatures, sword outstretched. It lets out an, an ear-piercing howl as the blade comes into contact with it and leaps back, distracting all the others in the process. Well, not exactly what I had in mind, but it worked. Somewhat. After that little stunt, all their burning eyes are on me now. No problem. I hold up a shaky sword toward one of them as they begin to circle me, rather than Sayaka. This was what I wanted, right? I... I mean, I saved the Sayaka at least. The beasts all leap at once. An assault from, from four sides. Oh god, this is going to end badly. Even a seasoned swordsman would be at a disadvantage here. Four arrows fly at once and nail each one of the creatures in the head before they can reach me, each of them exploding into a cloud of black smoke. I guess. Saika grins as she lowers her bow. Ah, that's right. By taking on the monsters, I was able to give Saika the room she needed to launch her arrows. All according to plan. You're telling me. I don't know how you guys can face these things on a daily basis. I guess. Ah, uh, well, it was nothing, really. Wait, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> she beams with an innocent grin. I'm sure she definitely meant something by that, though. Her mouth opens wide as she looks over Hikari's sword that I still hold in a trembling hand. Even now, I still can't help shaking after confronting those things. I just find it out of nowhere. She must have dropped him when she got grabbed by the tentacles. Saika sighs and knocks a magic arrow into her bow before letting it loose with a bored expression, as if she wasn't even that concerned with Hikari. The lazy yet somehow precise arrow pierced through all the tentacles at once, severing them cleanly. The monster still hidden in the shadows lets out some kind of shriek and drops Hikari to the ground before retreating. What the? 
she lands with a slimy splash. Ugh. That can't be pleasant. At least she's fine. Hikari rises and takes in a deep breath, about to yell at her partner, but she stops when she notices her sword in my fairly incapable hands. I grin nervously and scrub at the back of my head. Uh, uh, I hope you don't mind me borrowing it. It was sort of an emergency. Oh, really? I thought she would get mad, but no. She's just surprised that I have the balls. If it makes you feel any better, I really didn't do much at all with it. Saika clasps her hands together and chirps playfully, batting her eyelashes at me with a dreamy expression. Even though she's clearly just messing around, I can't... I still can't help but let out an awkward laugh as my cheeks flare up. N really? That's not what that's not what he did. Okay, now she's really making it obvious that I did nothing. Hikari squelches over to me and snatches the sword back with a sour expression. Ugh. She got some of her slime on me. <laughs> Oh boy. He doesn't have magic powers, that's the problem. Magical outfit. This is fan service magical grown boy. Hikari continues to simmer as Sayaka goes on. I can't even tell if she's being serious at this point. Uh pass. I guess. I wonder, would my magical outfit be as, uh, light on materials as theirs are? I feel cold just thinking about wearing one. I don't know how they manage. Hikari, sin Hikari suddenly lights up and strikes a pose, blade at the ready. She stomps her foot in frustration, the slime that no doubt oozed between her toes, giving off a squelch. Saika sighs dramatically and throws her hands up in the air. She's right. I can't imagine how much worse things could have been if that girl had still been around. Kenta, 
I think I'm holding up fine. Me? Let's see. I'm drenched in sweat and my heart is still thumping like crazy from the adrenaline rush. I think I might throw up. And my head feels like it might split open at any moment. I'm... okay, actually. Oddly enough, I really do feel fine. Better than fine, in fact. I'm happy I could finally do something, even if it wasn't much, so I'm not as much a burden for these two. Sure, I guess. Hikari peers into the darkness, still holding her sword firmly. She seems reluctant about giving up on the fight so soon. Sayaka slaps a hand down on Hikari's tense shoulder and she loosens up. Just a little. I know, right? Yeah, I'd be surprised if he shows up another night. Hikari finally gives up, her sword fading with a dim light. She reluctantly joins the pair of us and we begin the journey home once more. Alright, finally. I will be ending here for now. So, next part. Let's see what happens before he goes to sleep. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Rate, comment, subscribe, and see you guys later. Have a good one.